So hi, Herr Dopfer. Ah, hello. Hello, my friends from Sonic State. I'm glad to have you here again at the Superbooth 2023. And as usual, I want to show you uh, our new products. Uh, we have uh, two uh, products which uh, expand the range of our uh, polyphonic systems. And they are here. We have a polyphonic portamento controller, which can be used for uh, polyphonic uh, applications uh, to have available the glide function in a polyphonic system. It's working straightforward. You have three CV inputs and four CV outputs. In this system, uh, the outputs are already internally wired to the, to the oscillators. That's why uh, there's nothing connected because uh, in the some of the polyphonic modules are already pre-wired. Yeah, it's uh, working pretty straightforward. This is one chord and this is the other chord without glide. And now as I increase the, the portamento time, it goes down or even slower. Without glide, it's like that. And the other polyphonic module we show uh, at the Superbooth here is a polyphonic mixer. Um, in a polyphonic uh, patch, you will have uh, a chance to mix several polyphonic VCOs to obtain a fatter sound. And for this application, the polyphonic mixer uh, has been designed. You have uh, three polyphonic channels with uh, four voices each. You have uh, internally, it's made of 12 VCAs um, arranged in a matrix of three by four. Um, you have three inputs for, uh, for th up to three uh, polyphonic VCOs, but it has also a uh, very special feature if uh, channel B is not used, as in this example, the module generates the sub-octaves of, uh, of the channel A. That means you have four frequency dividers. One is for this input, one for that input, one for that, one for that. And it is uh, internally pre-wired to the switching contacts of the channel B inputs. So if the channel B is not used, the control uh, is used for the sub octaves. I will show it to you. So I play a chord and now I add the sub octaves simply by this control. And does that work on any waves? Yeah, it works on any wave. Uh, waves uh, you have um, about a three volt is uh, is, is the trigger level, so the incoming voltage has to be at least uh, about three volts, uh, so th so that the, the frequency dividers are working. Right. Okay. Which so most VCOs in Eurorack right, would right. be above that in, anyway. In, in this they? case, uh, a sawtooth is used, but also a triangle or sine or whatever uh, can be used uh, if three volts uh, 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 is reached about. And uh, in the third <coughs> uh, input, I have. Uh, the second VCO, here I use um, the rectangle outputs, it's this one, and I have a special patch here where I use four LFOs uh, to modulate the pulse width of the rectangle. Now it's off and I have uh, the module A135-2 used uh, to change the level of the modulation simultaneously for all four uh, VCOs. And it sounds like that. This is without modulation. And now I increase the level. And now I add the other VCO, the sawtooth, and the support tape. That way you obtain a very fat sound, but uh, I've heard that something is a little bit misadjusted, I don't know. Anyway, you, 
You, you, you we know, understood, you know, yeah. There was you, a little bit of a tuning issue, but yeah, we got it. Okay. And uh, then I will show you <coughs> another new module. It's uh, a phaser. It's a copy of a phaser which uh, was designed in the 70s of the last century. It was called Schulte Compact Phasing A uh, from a company located here in Berlin. And at this time, uh, this phaser was used virtually by all the famous musicians like Tangerine Dream, Klaus Schulz, Kraftwerk and so on. And in the meantime, the, these units are available second-hand at very high prices, thousand euros and, and more. And so we designed, uh, decided uh, to build a copy of this uh, phaser. And I remember I also had this phaser in these years and uh, every piece of music uh, I heard uh, I was processed by the phaser because I loved that sound that much. So Okay, so I just used the signal we had before, which is running uh, through two of these phaser modules. One is used for the left channel and one is used for, for the uh, right stereo channel. And it is uh, they are controlled um, by opposite signals. I use an LFO and the LFO goes to, the, to this one and the inverted signal goes to that one. So the, if the one uh, channel goes up, the other one goes down. Okay, and now I, I add the phaser. This is the sound without the phaser. And now I add the phaser signal. And that sounds like that. The, the speed of the modulation and reduce the intensity of the modulation. I can change the offsets of each of the phases and go up with the resonance so it's close to self oscillation. You obtain a very, very fat phaser phaser sound of these models. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you at this system. And now uh, we go to Holger, who is uh, more familiar with the other module. It's uh, a dual voltage controlled LFO. So Amazing. let's make a break. Okay. So um, just one quick question: D Are these uh, all these uh, new modules? Are they available now, or what's um, the all modules are available end of May, early in June, apart from the polyphonic mixer. This will be available in summer because we will add uh, a feature which is not seen here. We will add a mute switch to each channel so you can adjust the level in advance and switch on and off each channel. And it, it was a suggestion by a, a few customers a few days ago. and. Uh, that's why uh, it will be a little bit later in, in, in summer. No problem. But all, all other right. modules are now in production and will hopefully uh, ship end of May, early in June. Perfect. OK, well, let's switch over to Holger and we'll have okay. a look at the others. So hi, Holger. Um, you're going to talk about the next uh, dope for module, right? Right. We are looking at the A147 dual voltage controlled LFO, which is a rather straightforward approach. It's, a, as the name says, voltage-controlled uh, LFO. It is resettable. Um, it's got five waveforms, um, where we've got pulse wave, triangle, sine, plus uh, a ramp up and down. Oh, it's the other way around, sorry. Um, the more unusual things are that the pulse wave can be modulated or set manually between zero and 100 percent so no limits concerning uh, disappearing uh, voltages because yeah you can turn it off then but on the other hand if it's 100 percent you've got a, a dc voltage source which is quite handy um, uh, the uh, the more specialized part is that it can go up to about 2000 hertz and if you set the control voltage knob fully right, 
uh, it does follow one volt per octave, so it can double as, a, as an auxiliary audio oscillator. The waveforms are um, relatively exact. It's a, uh, it's, a Curtis, it, it's a Curtis oscillator in the end. And um, other features are that the control voltage can be switched off or inverted. The control voltage input itself is bipolar, but some control voltage sources, like for example a sequencer, don't provide negative voltages, so you can add or subtract from the frequency. Um, it can be set to by via jumper to two different frequency ranges. One of them is up to 2K. The other one is up to 200 hertz, and there you'll get the uh, slowest speeds where a cycle would uh, last a couple of minutes, probably. We never measured it, to be honest. Is there, is there any interaction between the two uh, LFOs, or are they... It mm. could, obviously, you could patch that, right? But right, that's right. what I wanted to say. They're completely independent, unless you patch it like that. Right, okay. So, uh, yeah, we think it's a rather useful little thing, quite straightforward. No whistles, no bells, but it's... Yeah, very what, useful. What yeah. we want. Yeah. So you've got a bit of a patch. Should we just hear it in action? I suppose. Um, or maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> no, there, it, it, it's possible. Um, it is. Although the sequence has been made by I don't know who last night, um, so I don't claim any copyright for that. Um, We've got the oscillator, um, at the moment two synced oscillators going into a filter which saturates and distorts a bit. It's the sine waves, uh, so... With our sync going now, I mean... Uh, have them independently. I don't know how the tuning of the slave oscillator is. Oh, what's that? Ah, right. Okay. There is something unexpected. Ah, okay, the slave oscillator has a different... Okay, that's kind of... Uh <laughs> well, we got the idea anyway, but yeah. Um you, because, uh, yeah, it's quite early in the morning and we didn't set up fully yet, so... Uh So now you've got the two dual uh, uh, LFOs affecting each other, right? What, what we're hearing is one channel, one single oscillator of this one, and uh, the second one was just modulating the pulse width. But I think it's enough to get an idea. It's, it's application, capable of yeah. doubling as yeah. a quite fully featured LFO or an auxiliary Excellent. audio yeah. oscillator. Excellent. Well, Holger, thank you very much. You're and welcome, uh, and sorry about the chaos. <laughs> it's Super Booth. It's supposed to be chaos, right? <laughs> That's why we're here. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Bye.